I'm going to say something very controversial here. I don't think that rats deserve the bad rap they get. For instance, did you know that they use giant African pouched rats to sniff out tuberculosis and landmines? Maybe I can win you over. Hi, I'm Danielle Dufault, and you're watching Animal Logic. First off, let's see the evidence against the rats. There are more than 60 species of rats, and they come in all sizes. The biggest is probably this sucker. The Bosavi woolly rat that was just discovered in 2009 in the rainforest of Papua New Guinea. It's almost 3 feet or 88 centimeters long. Rats were originally from Asia, but have spread across the globe aboard ships and planes. Though they can also swim really well. They're able to tread water for 3 straight days. Rats are incredible at adapting to new environments. In fact, scientists have speculated that after the next mass extinction, it will probably be huge rats that dominate the Earth. Just like Fallout. Another thing they have going for them is that they make a lot of babies. A female rat can mate around 500 times in 6 hours, and some rats can produce over 2,000 offspring in a single year. The rat is one of, if not the, most invasive species in the world. Some experts estimate the rat to be responsible for between 40 and 60% of all the seabird and reptile extinctions, 90% of those happening on islands. In January of 2015, an international rat team delivered by helicopter over 100 tons of rat poison to the island of South Georgia. Rats had reduced the bird population by 95% by consuming their eggs and young. The poison seems to be working so far, and it looks like the island is rat free. If that doesn't impress you, here in Canada, the province of Alberta has been waging an all out war against rats for decades. Alberta has no sea access, so it took the rats until 1950 to reach its borders, but the government was ready, fighting the rat invasion with shotguns, bulldozers, explosives, poison gas, and incendiaries. Several farm buildings were destroyed in the battle. But for the past 65 years, Alberta claims to be the only jurisdiction in the world to have fought rats and won. In parts of India and Burma, they have a rat flood every 50 years, which they are helpless to stop. Scientists were skeptical it existed until the latest flood that just finished in 2011. Every 50 years, the Melkokana baxifera bamboo drops 80 tons of seed per hectare to the ground, and the rats have a big party. With this new food source, their numbers grow exponentially. Once the seed is gone, the new rat army spreads out, consuming crops and leaving people starving. One last disturbing thing that I should bring up about rats is the rat king. A rat king involves a number of rats intertwined at their tails. They become stuck together with something such as blood, dirt, ice, or just simply knotted. This group of connected animals then continue to grow as one ball of rats, like some kind of rat katamari. Although there are both historical and modern examples of these phenomenon, scientists are unclear as to whether they are natural occurrences or formed by human intervention. I've painted a pretty bleak picture of rats so far, and I haven't even mentioned the black plague. So here comes some positive rat points. First off, rats make great pets better than hedgehogs, gerbils, hamsters, and chinchillas. Sorry. Few pets bite less and are more loving than a rat. The only other pet that is as friendly is the guinea pig, and probably for the same reason. They both have a very long history of domestication. In the case of the guinea pig, it was the ancient Incas that domesticated them for food, but with rats? It probably started with rat baiting in Victorian England. Rat baiting was a horrible sport, in which a dog was placed in a pit of rats and people would place bets on how long it would take for the dog to kill them. The record holder was a bull terrier that killed a thousand rats in less than a hundred minutes. A process of breeding the rats was begun to create a steady supply for the pit. The sport was finally ended by a decree, but not until it had flourished for nearly 70 years and started the domestication of rats. Now, let's tackle the Black Plague. Modern dislike for the rat chiefly stems from them being blamed for the spread of the bubonic plague, or, to be more specific, the fleas on the rat causing the plague. However, a recent study looked at tree ring records and established the weather conditions present during the Black Plague, and have determined that it was not likely an outbreak of rats, but rather gerbils that caused the spread of the disease. So, start throwing some heat the gerbils way. In fact, medically, the rat has made huge sacrifices for us humans. 
Rats and mice make up 70% of the test animals in labs. There are over a hundred different strains of lab rats, many of which have been bred to express human diseases such as cancer, diabetes, and Alzheimer's so that we can find a cure. The research goes far beyond diseases, however. Here is a rat growing an implanted liver so that one day scientists could provide organs for patients in need. In another study, Human volunteers were able to get a rat to move its tail simply by using thought alone. By linking two brain-computer interfaces, the person wagged the rat's tail telepathically. In this study, scientists were able to take a paralyzed rat and get it to walk again, bypassing a severed spinal column and creating new connections from the brain to the legs. The importance the lab rat has had on medical research cannot be overestimated. Finally, I'll leave you with the Karni Mata Temple in India, also called the Rat Temple, where people come to worship the 20,000 rats that live there. The life of a rat is considered so sacred there that if one is killed, it must be replaced with a rat of silver. So what animal should I check out next? Please let me know in the comments. If you want to keep this show going and get episodes a whole week early, be sure to sign up for your free 30-day trial of the video streaming app Love Nature, which is currently featuring Animal Logic. It's not available in every country yet, so if you can't get it, you can still watch episodes a week early on our website, community.lovenature.com. Be sure to subscribe for new episodes of Animal Logic every other week on YouTube. Thanks for watching.